Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Chris with Chris Flores Media. Today, I want to show you guys how I was able to upgrade my audio from sounding like this. Hey, hey, one, two, welcome to the channel to sounding more like this. Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I was able to do it very, very cheap. I did it for a hundred bucks. Let's talk about it. Hey, if you're new around here, we do a lot of like film tutorials, uh, gear reviews. If you're into all that, please consider subscribing and growing along as we grow here on the channel, right? Uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about how I was, I was able to upgrade my audio. So a long time ago, I used to record my video on my iPhone and I was able to record the audio using my Rode NTG2 into a Behringer interface, into Reaper, and then I would sync it Sometimes it would work, sometimes it didn't. Just cause with the iPhone, it records in variable frame rate instead of constant. So sometimes the audio and the video would just go out of sync and it, I, I'd never want to sync audio ever again. So when I got the Sony A6400, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna record internal, internal, internal. I'm not gonna ever deal with that again. I'm never gonna use Handbrake again. Awesome tool, but oh my God, it took forever on my, on my older computer. So I was kind of traumatized, right? But you know, with the whole growing and just wanting to up your quality and everything, right? I got this amazing image. I wanted to get amazing audio and I just wasn't happy with the audio I was getting going direct from the road into the camera or even the NTG2 right into the camera. It just, it didn't sound good. With the road, with the shotgun mic, I was having, I was having to set the audio at like 15 or 17. And we all know at that point, it's not gonna sound good. And then with these guys, not bashing on them. I love these things. They have done so good for me. I'm using the white one today just because I haven't featured it in a video yet. I recently got it, but for whatever reason, just the noise floor, they're just super sensitive. They, they pick up so much like right on the camera. I've got it set to one and then I've got this on the middle and I'm hitting the negative 12, which is kind of where you want to be on the audio levels on the camera. But it's just, I don't know. It just wasn't there. Right? So I started researching and somebody recommended me, Kevin Ross, he recommended me get the Zoom H6, which is about like three, $400 and I was all in. But then, you know, trying to save some money, I started looking at different things and I found this thing, it is a lot older, it's a couple of years old now, but I was able to get it used very cheap. So I highly recommend you look for it. I was even ready to get it brand new for 200 bucks. I'll have the link in the description if you're interested but I'm talking about the Tascam DR60D uh, Mark II. Uh, I saw a couple of videos like Curtis Judd or Caleb over at DSLR Video Shooter. They were talking about how the preamps on this Tascam were a lot cleaner. They sounded a lot better. Uh, they had less noise floor than the, than the Zoom or even the Mark I of the Tascam. So that's why I decided to go with this way. Uh, with the Tascam, but I will say this, which they also said as well, the Tascam battery life sucks. <laughs> I've, it requires four AA batteries. I've been able to record for like an hour and a half and then the batteries just start. I could literally just see the, the level just, just go down on the screen. It's not good. So I highly recommend you use an anchor or any other power brick just to make it extend a little bit longer, right? Second reason why I'm very happy with this thing is because it's an internal recorder. So it gives you the flexibility to record internally. So you got your video, you got your audio, you got it separate, and then you could bring it back together and post. You could sync it up, or you can also route the audio from the recorder to your camera. Uh, so basically just like if I wanted to connect this to the camera, I'm just connecting the task cam straight into the camera, leave the audio level at one. And there you go. You got internal better, better audio than you would using this thing straight into the camera or the NTG2 straight into the camera. So that's the second thing. And finally, my probably my favorite reason why I'm very happy with this purchase, besides it was only a hundred bucks, right? Is that it has multiple inputs, right? So I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you need to record a couple of people talking and then you've got one input on your camera and you're just like, do I bring a mixer? I've never seen to this day, I've never seen a mixer that's any smaller than this. So that's kind of like annoying. So this thing offers four inputs. So you got two XLR inputs and then you've got a, a stereo jack just like this would go into the camera. That same kind of output. I mean, if I wanted to connect the road into the Tascam, 
I would be able to do so. And each one of those inputs has its own separate gain control. So I'd be able to adjust the gains on all of them, get my audio level set for if I wanted to have three speakers and then I could record it externally and I could record it internally into the camera just in case you never know, right? Like if you need a quick turnaround, you got your audio straight to the camera. If you got some time to record it, to fix it in post, you've got external audio that you can work with, get it to sound its absolute best, right? Quick tip that I learned, took me a little while to learn to figure out on my own, but in Final Cut, and I'm pretty sure you could do it in Premiere, but in Final Cut, if you add a noise gate, funny thing, I learned that from playing guitar. I wanted to figure out how to like tame the guitar sound to make it sound cleaner. If you put a noise gate as the first thing in your signal, like you'll be able to control when it opens and when it closes. So that'll like reduce the noise floor. That'll reduce just the emptiness of that kind of stuff would just be shut out with the noise gate. I like to set my threshold at negative 60. Uh, from there, you could either set it higher because maybe it's still too low and too much noise is entering, but not too high to the point where it sounds like this, like you have to yell to where you have to yell for it not to cut you off. And then not too low as well to where it's like, what's the point of this thing, right? I like to leave it at 60 and I adjust from there. That will also help you fix your audio, get it to sound a lot better if you don't have the money or the budget to invest in something like the Tascam, right? I was pretty lucky to find it on my local Facebook marketplace for a hundred bucks. I messaged the guy, I was like, why are you selling it for so cheap? This thing is still 200 bucks. He's like, man, I've had this for years. I haven't used it. I just want to get rid of it. So I'm very happy that that's what his attitude was. I got a really good deal out of it. But even at 200 bucks, if I was gonna buy it brand new, I'd still recommend it. Like I said, I was ready to buy it brand new, but I was just lucky enough to get it used, all right? If you wanna see a video about what else it can do or what kind of setup I have it set up on, please let me know in the comment section. But I just wanted to keep this very simple, right? So I was able to up my audio for 100 bucks with the Tascam DR60D Mark II. It is older, but it's still a great buy, right? Go check it out. Like I said, links are in the description, right? I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you can, you know, leave me a, hey, Chris, your audio does sound so much better. Like, hey, that hundred bucks is totally worth it. Kind of comment in the comment section. If not, just give me a like. If this video was not useful to you, just give me a dislike and I'll try better next time, right? Until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.